It's Friday, July 22nd, 2022, and welcome to episode 12 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. Thanks to Dennis Evanoski for last week's special edition. This week, we return to our regular News Digest format. In this edition of the Postcast, the latest on the former Maritime Officers Training School on McKay Avenue, the USS Hornet is the last ship floating by Seaplane Lagoon, the winners of the July 4th parade are announced, and a new activity your kids will literally flip for. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story, the saga of the former Maritime Officers Training School on McKay Avenue continues. Postcast listeners will recall that back in March, the planning board, with the approval of the Alameda Historical Advisory Board, had approved the demolition of the structure to make way for the creation of a senior convalescent living facility. In June, it was revealed that an application to place the school on the National Register of Historic Places had been submitted. At the time, there was confusion around who made the submission. Initially, it appeared to be the Alameda Architectural Preservation Society. Later, the AAPS said it was submitted by Alameda resident Carmen Reed, and that although Reed was a member of AAPS, the submission was solely Reed's as an individual. The submission process was originally removed from the state's Historic Resources Commission agenda in April due to multiple issues. But in light of Ms. Reed's submission, the process was returned to the agenda in June as part of Historic Resources' August 5th meeting. In response to this, the city's planning department prepared a 27-page report and Mayor Marilyn Ezie Ashcraft authored a three-page letter. Both documents referred to the current application being almost identical to earlier rejected applications and reiterating that the site does not meet criteria for inclusion on the Register of Historic Places, notably due to structural deficiencies. The State Historic Preservation Officer is charged with advancing or withholding nominations based on the input of local officials. By accepting the city's report, that would effectively put an end to the submission and allow the demolition and new construction to continue. There are a lot of moving parts to this story and a lot of players involved. For a detailed look at the entire story, plus links to other resources surrounding the facility, visit alamedapost.com slash top. Listeners will recall that back in April, the protections of rent control were extended to the residents of Barnhill Marina. Barnhill is unique in that it is the only floating home marina in Alameda. On Tuesday, July 12th, the City Council took up further discussion of the recent control ordinance and heard from City Attorney Michael Rausch about how the rent controls were slated to be extended to what are known as liveaboards, that is, boaters who live aboard their vessels. The changes came as a surprise to the local maritime community. While those of you who are not boaters might not see the difference, it is helpful to think of it this way. A residential marina like Barnhill can almost be considered like a traditional trailer park, where homes are more or less permanent. The floating homes at Barnhill are literally incapable of moving on their own. Meanwhile, a recreational marina is more like a campground, where RVs are free to come and go as they please. There are no floating homes in any of Alameda's recreational marinas, and 25% of Alameda's liveaboard slips are currently available. At times, the exchanges in the meeting were rather lively, with many members of the boating community expressing frustration at the apparent lack of communication between the city and the marina community, with boaters wondering why rent control was being considered for their situation. The issue was succinctly put by Speaker Jonathan T., who said, quote, The underlying purpose of a commercial marina isn't to provide rentable housing, but to rent slips for people to keep their boats. Ultimately, the council voted 3-2 to two on a multi-part motion, which included revisiting the issue within the next 12 months. After the council meeting, the Alameda Marine Coalition released a statement which said in part, quote, While we are pleased to see that the city council has voted to not immediately impose housing ordinances on recreational boats, there continues to be a deep misunderstanding of the fundamental difference between a renter living in an apartment block and a liveaboard. Both in practical and well-established legal terms, floating homes are not boats, and boats are not housing stock. End quote. For a complete look at this ongoing issue, visit alamedapost.com slash news. Have you ever wished you could get a better view of the USS Hornet? Well, now you can. The fabled Carrier Museum now sits alone at the pier next to Seaplane Lagoon. The Maritime Administration, known as MARAD, has permanently moved the ships that were docked by the Hornet. The ships were part of the National Defense Reserve Fleet, 
a group of 100 mostly cargo and tanker vessels. These inactive ships are designed to be called into service quickly should the need arise. The move should come as no surprise to longtime observers. As far back as 2020, Marad determined that to continue to support the ships, the Alameda Channel would need to be dredged, and that was deemed prohibitively expensive. The ships are now docked in Oakland. Marad paid the city in excess of a million dollars in rent per year. Alameda will now begin the process of finding new tenants for the highly desirable pier spaces. More details at alamedapost.com. On the topic of Alameda Point, if you've been around the Tower Avenue area near Spirits Alley lately, you may have seen detours and a whole lot of impassable roads. This is due to infrastructure upgrades, including sewers and storm drains, as well as street lighting, pedestrian and cycling improvements, and transit facilities. While the detour signs are up, all of your favorite businesses remain open and looking forward to your patronage. So especially for those along Tower Avenue, make it a point to stop by and show your support. After the rousing return of the 4th of July parade, the winners are now known. So many great entries delighted the crowd who had been without our signature event for the past couple of years. Among the winners, Whisk Cake Creations, the Ensenal High School Soren Jets Band, Los Amigos Vaqueros, and the Alameda County Sheriff's Mounted Posse. You can find the full list of winners at alamedapost.com. This Saturday, we finish up Alameda's Innovative Streetcars, our walking history tours for July. This time, our focus shifts to Southern Pacific Railroad's East Bay Electric Lines, known as the Big Reds. This island-wide transit system was actually the result of a disaster, the 1906 earthquake, which decimated the existing lines, but ultimately led to the creation of a world-class system. As always, Dennis Evanoski will be our guide. You can prepare for Saturday's walk by reading Dennis's article, Disaster Breeds Wonder. To read Dennis's article, visit alamedapost.com slash history. To sign up for the tour, visit alamedapost.com slash tours. Now a look at upcoming events of interest to the Alameda community. A busy Saturday on tap. The Pacific Pinball Museum on Webster Street has added a new program geared for the younger set. The Little Flippers is for kids aged 5 to 12 and has chapters across the country. Your child doesn't need any pinball skills, and the group meets on a drop-in basis Saturdays from 1130 until 1230. The next class is this Saturday, July 23rd. The course is taught by certified special education instructor Scott Wygum and includes pinball basics, sporting etiquette, and some friendly competition. For information, visit pacificpinball.org slash little dash flippers. By the way, congratulations to the gang at Pacific Pinball for winning the 2022 Best of the East Bay Award for Best Small Quirky Museum, as voted by the readers of East Bay Express. South Shore Plaza's Summer Beats Concert Series continues this Saturday with a classic rock band, Almost Famous. The group is made up of musicians who have been part of bands like Tower of Power, Boston, Starship, and many others. Show us from 5 until 7. Beer and wine sales benefit the Alameda Education Foundation. Details at alamedasouthshorecenter.com slash events. The USS Hornet will mark the 53rd anniversary of the recovery of Apollo 11 this Saturday in a big way, including a splashdown presentation with Clancy Hattelberg, the diver who headed up the recovery team. And since the subject is space, Star Wars fans won't want to miss the Rebel Legion Endor base, 501st Legion Golden Gate Garrison, the Wolves of Mandalore, and droids all on board for you to see and take pictures with. Details at uss-hornet.org. In Alameda News Around the Web, the Alameda Chinese Club has held their last meeting. The Chinese Social Club was founded in 1975 and over the last 10 years has distributed $20,000 in scholarship funds. This year's scholarship luncheon at the Dragon Rouge Restaurant also served as the farewell for this venerable Alameda institution. The Friends of the Alameda Animal Shelter Food Pantry is in need of donations of unopened dry cat food as well as unopened wet dog food. Additionally, the shelter is in need of a volunteer vet tech assistant. This is an ideal opportunity for someone who is interested in pursuing a career as a veterinary technician. Visit alamedaanimalshelter.org. That's it for this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Visit our website, alamedapost.com slash newsletter to sign up for our weekly newsletter. It's free and will never sell or give your personal information to anyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Find the Postcast wherever you get your podcasts or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. 
I'm Scott Pure. I'll be back next Friday with lucky episode 13 of the Alameda Postcast.